Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of All Ball Chicago. I'm your co-host, Robert Bobby Reed, and I got the legend, the NBA veteran, the McDonald's All-American, your host, Marcus, living in a building. What's up, Marcus? What's up, my beautiful people? And we got a special guest in here, a point guard from Chicago, tore down the walls in Lions Township. Went to UIC with his numbers hanging in the Raptors. You know he a Hall of Famer there. He's one of the Chicago's finest point guards. Give it up to Kenny Williams, man. What's up with it, boy? What's up, guys? Rob and, and Marcus. Uh, I love the show, man. Thanks for having me on, man. Why well, first would I, of all, I lobby for you, bro. I, I said, Liv, I'm tired of the six eight guys. We need some point guards in here, man. <laughs> thank you. Give me some thank guards, you, man. I'm six thank two, you. man. Come I on. appreciate that. All right, go know. ahead, Kitty. You go ahead uh, now. Man. Uh, 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 our gu guards under six feet need to get a little love. You know, we ain't all get the six, eight, six, nine with a nice little <laughs> handle like Liv, right? So, <laughs> hey, hey, what can I say, man? My, I, don't, I don't know, man. It's just like my mom. <laughs> My mom told me at one time I was the smallest guy in the house. And then overnight, man, I shot up to be 6'8", man. It's crazy. Wow. But, but, man, wow. Kenny, it's, it's an honor, man, to have you on the show, Our Ball Chicago. And we always talking, man, and, and, and chopping it up. I've been knowing you for a minute now, so we yeah. go way back. But I also want everybody to get some, like, get information from our show, man. So every time our guests come on, they always dropping jewels. So I know you're gonna you're gonna do the yeah. same thing. So we always start off by saying, "Who put the rock in your hand?" For those who don't know what the rock is, who put the basketball in Kenny Williams' hands? You know what? I was a baseball guy. You know, I was a baseball guy before I was a basketball guy. You know, and Marcus and Robbins, as you know, when we grew up, we played every sport, right? There was no sports specialization. You were just an athlete. We played football. We played baseball. We played everything, right? So growing up, I was baseball, but, you know, I was playing basketball. So probably about seventh grade, um, you know, I made the all-star team for baseball. I hit a single. I get on first base. And the first base coach goes, man, Kenny, this is something that you need to pursue. You don't need to pursue basketball. You think you'd be too small. I quit baseball the next day. <laughs> wow. He shouldn't have said wow. that. I quit it and, and I regret quitting it, right? I, you know, my mom was like, why are you? And I never told, actually, there's you you two are the, the few people that know this story. And I quit the next day and it was all basketball uh, from then, out, then on. But there was nothing that was forced. Um, you know, I think for me it was, you know, from where I'm from, LaGrange, there's a little, you know, there was a park called the center, what we call the LGC. And I learned playing basketball from from older guys, right? Taught me how to play the game correctly. I was a young guy, Lib and Rob. I wasn't even allowed to shoot in the games. <laughs> you know what I mean? Play defense and pass the ball. They right. say if you get a layup, that's it. So what it taught me is how to play the game, how to you know how to be a point guard, how to see the game, and how to affect the game other than scoring, right? So. Yeah, yeah. To be honest with you, God put that ball in my hand, and I just ran with it. <laughs> wow, wow. Amen. I mean, that's that's remarkable. That's a remarkable story right there, man. Because I had yeah. older, I had older brothers, and and I watched and my father play, you know, basketball. So they actually put the head ball in my hands. I, you know, yeah. Like, but it's all it's all love. It's all love. I mean, God loved. I mean, you know, yeah. That's no, you know, you know that. that you know, everybody's that, on their that, that's path, the basketball right? gods. I call it the basketball gods. Put the ball in your hands. That is. Well, so 
I, because, like I said, I've known Liv for a while. And I'm, I'm going to give you your flowers. I know you don't like it, but I'm going to do it. So I'm going to tell a quick story about Marcus Liberty. So I was in eighth grade. Um, I was, you know, went to Lions Township and they, King would come out to LaGrange for the Thanksgiving tournament and win it every year, right? So uh, after the championship game, me and a couple of our guys ran out to the bus and Lib was already surrounded. Now, mind you, Lib was the number one player in the nation. Think about that. So, okay, so I'm, I'm approaching 50 years old. There's only been 50 people named the number one player in the nation. There's 7 billion people in the world. Think about right. that. Like, <laughs> like I want you guys to really think about that. Like, right. you so the lot there's a there's a big lottery today, 400, 500 million dollars. You actually have a better chance of winning a lottery than doing what Marcus Liberty did. Right. So think Thank about you. that. But like, let me go on to my story. So I get an autograph from Marcus Liberty, and you know, <laughs> and we all, you know, we, we're hyped. Fast forward eight years later just graduated from UIC and Seattle Supersonics were going to take me in the second round with their last pick. They didn't. So what they did, they invited me to their rookie camp, I believe, or it was a free agent camp. At that time, the camp was in Utah. So it was like the Utah round ball classic. I get on the plane, get on the bus, get to the hotel. You know, you do your physical and I get on the bus. Guess who I see? Marcus Liberty. So just <laughs> full circle, like full and he talked to me, remembered I went to UIC. So, you know, that's why I love the game. That's why I love that camaraderie where, you know, I, I would have never known eight years later that I would see Marcus Liberty at an NBA free agent camp, right? I didn't even know who he was. And Marcus sat, sat there and signed all the autographs. He was outside that bus for like an hour to, the, to finally uh, Coach Cox pulled him in. Like, we got to go. So, but the same the same Marcus Liberty that I met is the same Marcus Liberty that, that exists right now. So you need to hear that story, man. Man, appreciate that. What's man. up, man? Live wow. 50 million people. <laughs> I mean, you say, think 50 about million? this, man. It, it's and no, I, I didn't I didn't set out to be the number one player in the country. I just love to play the game of basketball, you know, and whatever accolades came along with that, then it just came along with it. But I truly love the game, man. Whether I won an award or not, you know, I was going to play the game of basketball. So, Kenny, I appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, but not only, not only that, Kenny. You're small. You're five ten. You know, yeah. and that was unheard of. You know, uh, of a guard that quick, that with that leaping ability. You had yeah. all of that, man. See, a lot of people don't talk about that. They talk about your scoring. But you, yeah. you had them sneaky ups that if you catch somebody slipping, you're going to go yeah. up and pop the ball on. You know, I I never, until after I stopped playing, I never, I never thought of it as a crutch, right? Like, I never saw, I mean, like, you know, live, we hang out, and I hang out with a lot of basketball players. It'll be 6'8", six, 6'9", six, six, and then 5'10". So everybody, you know what I mean? But the, all my guys are tall. But I never, when I was playing, I was never – I never thought of myself as, man, you small, right? Like, mm -hmm. just do what, whatever the gifts that you have, use those gifts. Now, I worked hard, right? I lifted weights. I, you know, I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't do too much on my legs at all. That was just, that's the man upstairs, upstairs mm -hmm. to be honest with you. But I, I, I did work. I don't want, you know, whoever's listening or maybe you've got little, you know, younger kids listening, the work preceded the talent, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the talent was there, but without the work and the dedication, as you know, Marcus, as you know, Rob, too, like, you know, like it, 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 to have talent is like only half the battle. The other half is up to you. Right. It might even be more a percentage. But, yeah, I was, you know, and I think being able to see two guys help me out. Tony Freeman went to St. Joe's five, six. And the other guy is Don, Donald Whiteside. Um, those mm. two guys. You know, and I didn't meet Donald till till um till I was at UIC, but like those two guys, and then my guy Tracy Dildy, um, you know, who 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 those those two guys, and then when I got to college, three guys, those are the guys that instilled in me like, Ken, don't your height is nothing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. don't, don't worry about that now. So yeah, it was um you know, luckily I had really good 
basketball players, but really good people as well, Lib and Rob, to, 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 to kind of guide me on, right? Because the road sometimes gets bumpy, man. I'm not, mm-hmm. not going to sit here and say it was all easy. It wasn't, right? I mean, right. look, I, I went to UIC. There were only two other schools that offered me a Division One scholarship, right? That was uh, University of uh, Xavier and, um, and USC, University of Southern California. Wow. Everyone, everyone else was kind of like, we don't know, you know, we don't know if he's big enough. Yeah, he's got, but it's one of those things where they weren't ready for it, right? And mm-hmm. and Lib, you remember George Carl? George Carl yeah. was coach. You know what he told me? He was like, Kenny, the league's not ready for you. Mm. He's like, and I was like, what do you mean? He was like, so you're not going to make it in the league right now. What you need to do is go overseas and make money, and that's what I did, right? But he mm. was like. You're, you're before your time. He's like, you know, uh, and at the time, remember they had Dana Barrows, right? The 5'11 yeah. guy on their team. He's like, Kenny, we're not, you know, he's a veteran. But right. the thing I respect about George Carl, he told me, to, you know, he didn't try to placate it. He didn't try to sugarcoat it. But, yeah, I think um, that path, you know, no one makes it by themselves, Rob and, and, and Marcus. It's all about the people that are around you. I was lucky enough to have grown men around me. You know, starting in LaGrange, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, which has a rich basketball history. People don't know. Um, Marcus Washington went to University of Marquette from um, LT. Owen Brown, Maryland. Elmer Robinson, Iowa State. Jeff Hornacek, Iowa State. Those mm-hmm. guys, you know, I mean, those are the guys. I, I had guys in my area to look up to. Dirky Robinson. I can go through 100 names, man, in, in LaGrange that went to that park. But then the other thing with that park, where the center was, Ray Thompson would come, Lonzo Verge would come, Jamie Brandon would come. So we had pe- we had people coming to this little park in Lagrange to play, and I got to see that, and I got mm-hmm. to play against these guys. So, but you guys, that don't exist anymore. Doesn't no. exist. Anymore. You'll no. never see that again because never. because of AAU found because of AAU. You'll yeah. never. There's parks that I pass, and there's no. Imagine this. Imagine where you grew up, Rob and, and Marcus. You go and buy a park on a day like today, and nobody's playing. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Me and Marcus yeah. talk about that all the time. I can't. I just can't. It just. It's sad. It's really yeah. sad. Yeah. It's and sad. That's where, Listen, that's where, like you said, that's where a lot of us learn how to play the game. We fall down. We get back up. We play against it. adults. You know, older guys who who's got a little bit more knowledge. They teaching us a game on the fly while we out mm-hmm. there. So. It's a that's lot that exactly these right. youngsters can learn from, man, and they just don't have that. They, they're not getting that opportunity because maybe it could be because of the AU or because of the violence in Chicago. Yeah. But I know when I went to visit New York, they still mm-hmm. do it in New York. They still okay. do it in New York. And in LA. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. in LA. They still I do think it. it's more so AAU, though, Liv, because uh, AAU ain't nothing but street ball. Right. I'm glad you said, I'm sorry. Listen, there's some AAU programs that are doing it correctly, right? And when I say it correctly, they're teaching the game and it's for the kids, right? It's not for the coaches or the Nike contracts. It's generally for the kids, right? Um, the thing that I, you know, because I was in it for a while, right? I, I got in, but I, I, two things drove me out. And y'all know what I'm going to say. Number one was the parents. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it, man. And and look, I'm coming from a good place with that, right? Because the right. parents want, want their kids to do well. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is that when you're starting, when you're paying three and four thousand dollars, you want to return an investment. And that mm-hmm. means that your kid needs to be starting in your kid's division one. It doesn't work that way. It really yeah. doesn't. You know what I mean? It really doesn't work that way. And I always try to be honest. And I know, Rob, you can do this. And I know, Marcus, you can watch a kid for five minutes and tell if he's Division One. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? You can all right. I don't even, I can watch a kid run and tell you if he's Division One or not. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So right. I think that's kind of gotten lost in the shuffle because, you know, when we grew up, playing the game was free. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was free, yeah. you know? So yeah, I, I agree with you, Kenny. That uh, the AAU, uh, the team sponsor shoes, the shoe companies, you know, came in and they started doing all these, you know, high-profile tournaments. Yeah. Kids want to play in those tournaments because 
That's where the college coaches are going to be. Absolutely all, right. But every kid is not ready for that type of atmosphere. You That's know, right. I used to always say this. Be careful, you know, for that exposure because you might get exposed. You Ooh. know, and a lot of times people never they never figured it out. They like, oh, I want my baby to play with the Nike, Nike, you know, EYBL or the, the Under Armors. I want to play on that circuit. I want him to play. And then he never sees the floor. And then you have the problem. Why my son is not playing? Because I paid all this money for him to be on this team and traveled and this and that. You yeah. can stay local, get better, play the minutes, learn the game, and still get an opportunity to go play college basketball. Isn't the main right. goal to try to get a scholarship to play basketball? It doesn't have to be on that elite level. It, it doesn't. Power five it, team. it really doesn't, especially in 2021 with the technology. If you can play, coaches will find you. I had a very – I had a – I can't say his, well, I'm not going to say his name, but he said, Kenny, I, I asked, I was just talking to him. We were talking about a couple of players, whatever, just off the cuff, because I've known him for 20 years. He said, Kenny, I'd rather go to practice and watch a kid. He's like, these tournaments, I don't know who I'm getting because right. they are college coaches. And yeah, you might have a kid have a really good game, but I don't know his attitude. I don't know if he's a good student. I don't know if he's going to fit in the atmosphere that I am creating at A and B University, right? Because mm -hmm. Lib and, and, and Rob, you know, the, the last thing you want on your team is a talented jerk. Do mm -hmm. not, you don't want that on your team, right? Except the locker room. Your team. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. But let's talk about this, Kenny. You, okay. Your senior year. In high school, mm -hmm. and I read this in an article somewhere in one of the newspapers. I don't know which one. You were doing your thing in high school, and some schools started coming knocking at your door. Mm -hmm. But you stayed true to yourself. Said UIC was there from the beginning. From the beginning, they were they were they were recruiting me hard. But it's a lot of people that wouldn't do that, Kenny. You you stuck to, you stuck to your guns and said. I know some big, bigger programs are probably come, coming at, after me, but exactly. I'm going to sit right here and go to UIC because these guys stuck behind me. They, they stuck behind me, and that starts with Tracy Dildy, right? Tracy Dildy, and that was – they were recruiting me at the end of my junior year that summer, right? Marcus, remember the Morris shootout? Remember yes. going all the way out to Morris? That's where it started. Went out there and was, you know, doing my thing, and, you know, Tracy didn't come to me. You know what Tracy did? He went to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> he went to my mom and he said, I'm going to take care of him. You know, got me on campus. But it, I think it's just a, it was just more about loyalty. It was more mm -hmm. about how I felt. And, you know, I come from a, a really good family and, you know, a big family. So that's big. Right. I, and my mom, she didn't she didn't sway me either way. She would just say, I really like Tracy. <laughs> That's what she would say. <laughs> you know, and you were right. A lot of, you know, I had a couple Big Ten schools come at the end. But as you guys know, and, and Mark is shaking his head because this doesn't, this ain't going to apply to him. Schools come late when they can't get the original person they want. Mm. Understand? So, like, for Marcus, <laughs> that wasn't no problem, right? Because <laughs> nah. everybody, you know, everybody, every school wanted him. Schools wanted calling him as a second choice, right? They wanted, like, well, you didn't get such and such. Let's go for Marcus. But that, uh -huh. that's kind of how I felt, you know. And I remember sitting in a meeting with a, I'm not going to say the name. I was me and it was my coach, Coach Nikovich, and my mom. And my mom was like, well, how come we didn't hear from you last summer? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And the guy was like, I, I, you know what I mean? And so, yeah. So then I think that, and then being in Chicago as well, I mean, I think, you know, I really wanted my mom to come be able to see me and my family to come see me. And then the appeal was at the time UIC was up and coming, right? I felt like what, you know what it did? UIC like matched my mentality at the time. Mm hmm kind of a little bit under the radar, right? Some people have heard, some people have not, but in four years, they're going to hear. And that's kind of, you know, how it matched my, my, my mentality is, you know, a lot of people don't know if I could play or not. They've heard the name, they've seen it, but in four years, 
if I can help this program get to a national, you know, a national type program, you know, uh, I, I, and that's what happened. And, you know, we, along with Sherelle Ford and Charles Brakes and Mario Bailey, our starting five were all Chicago guys. Mm. And that's, that's, that was really important to me. And I don't know if you see that too much anymore, you no. know, because wow. no. they go to the different programs, you know, even the University of Illinois, that's still an Illinois school. But I mean, think about the t maybe the top players in the last 10 years. None of them stayed in Chicago in the Chicago land area. They all went. And I'm not I'm not saying it's good or bad. I just love that. There was some recognition. You go to a UIC game. There's five guys from the Chicago land area that, you know, so. Right. And I think, Kenny, also that certain people and I don't know, you know, I, I'm not going to say names or anything like that either. But mm -hmm. I think people put things out there about certain schools. Like I know when I was growing up, UIC was never mentioned like as a as the a school you want to go hoop at. You know right. I mean? like, That's true. You, it was like Illinois, University of Illinois, DePaul. Right. You know, and then you have to go downstate to Bradley or you know, one of those right. other down there. But why do you think people put that out there like a UIC? Because it's a great institution, you know, right. you can do a great education, you can play basketball. And you, you you stay in your home your home state you know your home city you yeah know? And, and I just don't I really don't understand why people put that out there like that yeah you know I it, it it's a good question that I've never really been able to get a clear answer um, even when I first you know came through you know I, as a as a freshman or even bef before that there was a guy named Chris Harris from King that was there Chris Harris. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pro, <laughs> you know, right. but I think the city of Chicago and, and nothing against the Paul, but, you know, after Mark Aguirre and all of them put put them on the map, the Chicago media refused to do anything in Chicago except for DePaul, Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I get that. Right. But listen, my in my four years, we would go at DePaul and ask, we would we told them we would play them anywhere. They wouldn't play us, right? So at wow. the end of the day, what it is, it's about money, right? So right. If you're a university of DePaul, right? And UIC beats you at home. That's bad publicity for, for DePaul, right? And I'm not saying mm -hmm. I, I got friends that went there, but I think it's more about money and politics than it is about basketball. Mm. Well, because let me off in a little, because they pay him, they pay y'all to come play them, right? Um, so that would be for them. It probably would have been a, what we call a, a money game, right? Where coming to them, they may may give us twenty thousand dollars, right? Or you get half of the gate or whatever, right? For 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 the most part, it might have not been that much, but their mentality is we got everything to lose. You guys yeah. don't. Yeah, right. You understand? You can't be paying you to come kick my butt. Right. I mean, <laughs> it's the, it's my, the market. My freshman, it's the... my freshman year with Tony Freeman, we went down to Illinois and we beat them in Illinois. Right? Mm. Then they came up, you know, and Dion was on that team. They came up my sophomore year and, you know, because they had to finish out the, the contract. We didn't see Illinois too much anymore. You know what I mean? So Tracy, yeah, Tracy, I, I just, think, Tracy just put that in the timeline too. He said, "Do you remember being in Illinois?" So yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, I think, you know, them big, and them big, them big ten, them big ten, uh, them big time schools too are afraid too, Kenny, to play teams yeah. like that because they know if we lose, we we, we schedule a UIC and they come down here and beat us. Now right. we. We're gonna have a hard time getting those Chicago kids to come. They're gonna say, You lost the UIC, you know, right. or, or vice versa, you know, whatever. Yeah. It be. But it'll, it'll be hard to get, recruit those top kids. And that's what it's about. It's not it's not about basketball, right? Because I mean, I remember we played at Syracuse my freshman year, and I'm running out the locker room like, we can win this game. And everybody looking at me, man, they're the number three ranked team. They got Billy Owens and Adrian Autry. See, Lev, I never because I I grew up playing with men. I'm gonna mm -hmm. give you your flowers. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna say hey. But once we play, I don't care who you are. I don't yeah, care. I don't care about the team. I don't care any of that. Now they blew us by fifty. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> <laughs> I, that my mentality wasn't like, well, let's have a good showing. No, yeah, no, no. Right. no. If we're gonna lose, we're gonna lose. But I never had that mentality like, okay. Um, 
you know, even if I, you know, we're playing against King a couple times, number one team in the nation. Okay, that's cool, but you know, that doesn't win games. You know, the talent. They still got to lace them up. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you had that opportunity to beat Illinois. You beat them. You guys did your thing, and now, Kenny, you you stayed all four years. You know, oh, yeah. guys are not doing that now. You know, let's talk yeah. a little bit about that, you know. And I know you wasn't set out to say, I'm going to break any kind of records there. You just love playing the game of basketball. That's it. Just <laughs> and whatever playing. happened after that just happened. Yeah, and kind of like what you said about your rankings, it was just more about the love, right? I mean, I never set out to, you know, be the all-time leading scorer at UIC, the all-time leader. All those accolades, I never set out for that. I mean, it was more of, you know, loving to play the game. And it was more about UIC than it was for me, right? Because at the end of the day, what I really wanted to do is leave that legacy that you can go to a mid-major school, that school can be successful in a major city, and you can get the same type of, you know, notoriety, you know, national spotlight at UIC than at Duke, you know, all these other schools, right? That that was, for me, was to try to leave that legacy that you can be 5'10", right? You can come from a suburban school. You can, you know, and you can still, you know, have an impact at a university where people were another kid in four years might say, you know what? I want to do that. I want to mm -hmm. go to UIC and see if I... So that's that was the most important thing for me was to leave that legacy and then... You know, I represented the people on my team, the people that played before me, the Tracy Dildes, the Tony Freemans, the Brian Hills. Like those are the, that's how I that's how I foresee a college, um, you know, a four year stint at a college is you leaving a legacy that someone else can follow. And that, you know, because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this, I'll trade all of those accolades to get to the tournament four years in a row. Mm. I'll do that in a second. Mm. <laughs> Mm. I'll do that in a second. Mm. So, wow. hey, Anton Sams wanted us to ask him a question, Lib. Uh, oh. He said, "Lib and Rob Kenny, uh, talk about how Donald Whiteside guarded guarded you in college." Woo! Donald Whiteside was strong. He was quick. So let me quick tell you a quick story. He was a senior. I was a freshman. We're playing at Northern Illinois. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, so Donnell Thomas was on that team. And Chicago guys, right? Yeah. So Tony, Tony Freeman had dislocated his shoulder. Tip, you know, they score or we are, they score. Um, my, my buddy Rob Johnson from Dunbar throws me the ball. Donald Whiteside has me 94 feet. I get to half court. I was like, hey. I pass. I'm like, look, I'm not bringing this ball up anymore, bro. <laughs> I was so tired, bro. Like everywhere I went, he went. Like literally, you know how you have a shadow. Uh -huh. That was down wide side on me the whole game, the entire game. Like just just as quick, and he was he was strong too. But here's the thing, Liv. Kind of like you said, teaching me. Mm -hmm. Hey, do this, don't do that. Like we at the free throw line. He was like. Do this, do that. So, but playing me oh. hard now, playing me hard, but in my ear. So, yeah. Oh. Don Whiteside, I mean, now you got to understand, Don Whiteside played the league, Toronto yeah. Raptors, and, and, and played, right. played with the Atlanta Hawks. Listen, Don Whiteside was so crazy in, in practice that um, Damon Stoudemire was the point guard. He goes to Isaiah Thomas and says, this is a story. Don will hate me about this. He tells Isaiah, look, I can't be working this hard in practice against this dude, man. Like, like I got to rest. That's how Don Whiteside, like, literally, and then they traded Don Whiteside. So that's the NBA for you, right? But, yeah, that's my man right there. Like, and, and then, you know, fast forward four years, three years, uh, six years down the line, we do a tournament with J.J. Mitchell called we Sponsored by Upper Deck, and we tour Europe, and Don Whiteside's my roommate. So wow. all full circle, yeah. Wow. Hey, Don Whiteside told us that story, Lev. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember he, he said him. Isaiah Thomas told him, like, "Hey, man, uh, you want to keep this job? You better back up off, Damo." Oh. And people don't even know that that type of stuff exists on that level. Absolutely, and 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 and, and I love Isaiah, but Isaiah got 
Isaiah has to understand that this is a guard from Chicago. You're gonna tell mm-hmm. a guard from Chicago to <laughs> chill and practice? Come on, come on, man. No, I mean because you know Don wants to play too. You know yes, what I mean? Sir. You yes, can't sir. tell a dog to stop barking. That's why I tell people. Right? <laughs> yes, yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> but but I want to talk a little bit about college, man, and, and okay. maybe you can help us out. You know, here on All Ball Chicago, when you see these one and dones, uh, and then. I'm looking at you who went all four years, got all type of accolades, you know, all type of awards, got your jersey retired. Do you think those one and done are going to get their jerseys retired? They only played one year. Or is they gonna or are they gonna do it for a a publicity stunt? They they don't it's not about it's not about college ball anymore. It's about that next level getting paid to get to play, right? Whether it be NBA or, you know what I mean? Like, I'll be honest, when I came as a freshman at, at UIC, the NBA was the furthest thing from my mind. Mm. The, the closest thing was graduating, right? For <laughs> just getting a degree, right? So maybe the problem is between the, in, the NBA and the NCAA is allowing the one and done, right? Mm-hmm. Either you allow the kids to make money from whenever or you say they have to stay three years, but they have to have some academic progress. So then after three years, if they decide to go pro or they, you know, or they go somewhere, they can still come back and get their degree. You know what I mean? Like that should be infinite. That's for, for me, if you, if you're a university and I'm not saying 20 years later, you know, but my thing is why not? Why would you do that? Because what kids don't know when you, Enter the day you enter a university, you have five years to get a degree. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. already budgeted that money, right? So, you know, then why make a rule that if a kid declares pro, he can't come back and get eligibility to play college, right? So that's the problem. Is the uh, it's it's the definition of what amateurism is, right? That mm-hmm. doesn't exist anymore. That doesn't exist anymore because now. You know, you have kids. I believe there's a it was a football kid, right, that signed a million dollar contract for like a social media. So Ohio, that Ohio State. throw that out the window. So mm-hmm. you have to read what you have to do is redo the rules. You have to redo what you think amateurism is because at the end of the day, universities can't make millions and millions of dollars off of Marcus Liberty's jersey, but then Marcus Liberty can't come back and finish his degree. There's something wrong with that system, right? So right. kind of going back to your point, the one and done's is based off these you know, these kids figure the universities don't care about me. So I'm gonna try to get everything I can from them to further my career, right? But here's mm-hmm. the caveat. Here's the caveat now. What you gonna do after basketball, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. What you gonna do when you turn 30, right? Mm-hmm. You know, barring injury, you know. I played till 35, I, you know, and I played in Europe till 35, live in, and, 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 and that's still, I, that's half my life. I still yeah. have to come back. Right. And integrate myself into whatever profession that is, but without an education, how are you going to do that? Yeah. Hey, how I, long was I, that transition for you, Kenny? Sorry, Liv. Yep. Yeah, how long was that transition for you coming back, though, from pros after you had your degree? Oh, bro, like, I will tell you when I, so you're talking about when I stopped playing and, t- and then, trying to figure it out i would tell you that 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 year was the hardest year of my life depression um i was just in the crib watching basketball and what people don't realize i identified myself with basketball since i was five years old and to, and then to not come back and play that that's a part the mental health part that a lot of people either they're embarrassed to talk about or it, it, it's something taboo about it, but I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. I was depressed as hell. I was in the, I didn't do anything. I didn't even pick up a basketball, right? Until, you know, it, it had to be the master. One day it just clicked. I was like, you know what, K-Dub, you don't have to play at the level you playing. Go to the gym and shoot. Went to that gym and shot and then started my career. You know, right, right now what I do is, I guess the basic where you can see it is I'm a recruiter. Companies call me and I, you know, I um, find talent for them. I've been doing that for the last 20 years. But 
you know, that gap from when I stopped playing to then was a was a tough time, man. Didn't talk to anybody. Was just like literally, and then I was like, damn, I'm depressed. You know what I mean? Hey, so, Liv, that seemed to be an epidemic, though. It, it, that seemed it, to be a problem amongst professional athletes, Liv. Because we've it, heard it, this about five, six times on here, bro. Absolutely it is. And, you know, it needs to be talked about because, you know, I, I, when you love something that much and then you kind of realize that you can't do it at the level you can do it, you know, and you can't make money from it no more, bro, I'm going to tell you something like that's not that's not something that's easily done. It's not something that's easily talked about either. But, yeah, I was I was very depressed, man. But then, you know, by the grace of the master was able and then and myself as well, able to get myself together and, you know, doing well now. But. There's a lot of stories of people that never recover, man. Yeah. And I I think, Bob and Kenny, that universities, even high school, mm -hmm. you know, they need to have some type of curriculum that helps you trans transition from high school to college. You know, whether that's, you know, teaching you the study habits that you're going to need to to be successful on that that next level and then yeah. from college to whatever it may be overseas mba whatever profession it may be you need to transition to that because you started playing basketball or we started playing basketball and then all of a sudden that ball stops right and now i'm confused you confused you like i got my degree but I, I, i've been playing I've been I've been dribbling this basketball, shooting, and doing this for a very long time. Now, what am I going to do? I think that we need to find out early what yeah. we want to do after basketball. Whether that's being in the media, right? Being a general manager, being a head coach, whatever it may be, we need to understand that's what we want to do. And some people get it, and some people don't. Well, and that's why. I mean, I love this show because both of you keep it positive, but that's why universities need a Marcus Liberty, right? That's why, and I'm not saying any university, I'm not going to say, it, but that's why, because your knowledge is what's going to help these young kids. Because let's, th let's think about it. Even through college, there might be one kid that goes on to play professionally. You got 11 kids trying to transition into the professional, whatever profession, that needs to be taught along with basketball, right? Mm -hmm. So you need a you need a you need a Marcus Liberty to say, hey, look, you know, let's. I was I was number one player in the nation. This is how I. So you need people who've done it, mm -hmm. who've been in it, to then be able to go talk to the kids because you have you already come with that reputation of you know being being there and doing that, being in the NBA. Like I think universities need to. And, and high schools as well need to invest in that, yeah. not just the basketball part, right? I call it maybe, you know, you can call it a social worker, someone who is helping plan beyond basketball while yeah. basketball is happening. Instead of basketball ends, now let's make a decision, right? So right. it's not necessarily a plan B, it's a plan and a plan, right? Mm -hmm. You can plan to be you know, plan professionally and it might happen, but also you also have a plan that's outside of basketball. Those two can go parallel throughout your career. Yeah. And it seems like, Kenny, you had some good people, though, in your Absolutely. Body. You know, from your coach. Who was the head coach when you was at UIC? Ron Nick. Oh, no. That, so that was Bob Hallberg. That was Bob oh, Hallberg. Man. Dennis Wills. Tracy Dildy was the assistant. And then Rick Pryor was the assistant, but he had left and took the job at Chicago State. So, but yeah, mm -hmm. good good people through um, throughout college. Um, you know, all of them, you know, made sure as far as school and class, I was going that going there. But then just out there, what it is, Liv, they cared for me, right? Yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. like I used, you know, they didn't use me for four years and then, you know, get rid of me. You know, I still talk to Tracy. I still talk to. Uh, Coach Wills, Bob Horbuck passed a couple years ago, but I was in, you know, I was in contact with him. And then in high school, I, you know, I, I played for the Bobby Knight of high school basketball, and that was Ron Nikovich. Like mm. he didn't play. Like you know, no, there was no, there was no discussion. Here were the rules, and that's it, right? Like 
practice started at 315. If you weren't in the gym at 315, you weren't getting in the gym. He -hmm. locked all the doors, fam. Like, you're not getting in the gym. Wow. Yeah, he was. But, you know, know, a little bit off subject, I'll talk about him. He was the one that told me, Kenny, you can play at your speed and you'll be successful or you can slow your speed down to the team and we'll be successful. Oh, wow. And he was like, you know, a lot of a lot of colleges, colleges at that time thought I was like too slow to play. He was like, if you slow our speed, slow your speed down to our speed, we're going to be successful. Live my senior year. Before before the tournament started, the number one team in the state was King. The number two team in the state was either Thornwood or Thornwood Ridge. Lions Township was number three. Wow. Oh, wow. We, we didn't even start off ranked, right? Now we end up losing the super sectional to Bloom. But, like, when he told me that, my senior year, that went a long way. He was like, if you play at your speed, yeah, you, you're going you're gonna, to yeah, you, you're, you're do great. But if you play at our speed – our team would be great. And that got mm. me that got me more attention than if I would have played my way. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a sign though, Kenny, of you willing to learn more. There you go. Because you, know, you could have easily stayed stuck in your ways and got mad at that by saying, Well, why are you not letting me play the way I'm capable of playing? Exactly right. You know, exactly so that's right. That's a sign of maturity, man. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you something about uh that jersey being retired, man, at hmm. UIC. It's a lot of yeah. people that don't get their jerseys retired, man. And at yeah. UIC, how many guys got their numbers retired at UIC? Three. Three guys. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. And, and did one of them play with you? Or two Trail of them? four. Yeah. <laughs> on the same guys. team. Yeah. Two of you guys on the same team got your jerseys retired up in the rap. Yeah. And I think another guy went to Weston House. Mark Miller. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Chicago, All Chicago guys. Yes. Yeah. And it's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, and, and I saw some video. Your mom was there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Watching it. That I know she had to be proud of you, man. Yeah, man. That was her. That, you know, I tell people, like, in that jersey, there's a lot of people going up. It just wasn't me, right? It wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, just Kenny Williams. It's my mom, my family, all the people that helped me. It was Marcus Liberty. It was a whole bunch of, as it was going up, um, one of my friends, um, it was actually uh, it was Charles Brakes went to De La Salle. You know, he was kind of standing beside me. And uh, he, he looked at me. He was like, Ken, you're taller than all of us now. <laughs> wow. Wow. Don't yeah, it was a, it, it was pretty cool, and, and then that that was the thing. I had all my my teammates, um, you know, come um, come support me. I had guys, you know, Mark Miller was there, you know, after I graduated. I had, you know, Tracy, uh, you know, Tracy Dildy was there. I, I had people from all generations there. So that's what that was. That was for UIC, right? That it is pretty cool, though. You know, I I think I never, I think because it happened. At, a, at an older age, I can appreciate it more, right? Because it was so, I just thought about all the people that helped me get to this spot because you just don't do it by yourself. But yeah, it's, it's a great honor, man. And I'm, I'm glad it happened in Chicago. I really am. Yeah, man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So Kenny, what kind of advice would you give some of our listeners who may have a, a son or daughter that wants to get involved in basketball, but they don't know where to go? You know, they don't yeah. know, the, you know, what to do. Yeah. You know what? It's it's going to start with the individual, right? Like, I mean, it goes back kind of organically. Nobody had to tell Kenny Williams or Marcus Liberty or Rob to go shoot basketball, right? Like, I think it starts with there. I think a lot of parents try to force their kids into, into doing it. And I think a lot of kids do it to please their parents. But then what happens is they fall off because they never loved it. Like you can't teach love. Right. Mm. So I think, you know, when it comes to basketball, either you love it or you don't. What I would tell parents is, you know, find a coach. If you don't know what to do, find a coach that is more interested in their skill development. Right. Mm. Basic, 
the basics, right? Start with that. I think the analogy is this. What When we first learned how to drive a car, did they throw us in a Porsche? No. No. We'll crash it, right? <laughs> well, it's in the most basic car, so you learn. So and, and take the time to learn the game, right? Like, I mean, it's going to take time to develop that skill set. I, just, I would just say be patient with that. And then keep them in all sports, right? There's no reason to specialize. There's no reason that a, a third or fourth grader should be playing basketball 10 months out of the year. Mm-mm. Put them in baseball. Right. Put them in everything because that's how yeah. you're going to develop the total skill set, right? I think, you know, I, you're going to generally gravitate to what you love, right? So I think, you know, starting with the, the, the fundamentals and the basics – I mean, Marcus, I've seen you train. And I don't know if anybody's watched. Marcus, all the stuff that you do is basic. Mm-hmm. Basic basketball, footwork, yeah. how to get to the basket, angles. That's basic basketball. So this game is not hard to teach. Mm-hmm. It's not. But you have to be able to have that basics first, right? They don't put – they didn't. when I started high school, they didn't put me in calculus and then algebra. I right. started in algebra, then went to calculus, right? So it's – same thing with this is – having the patience to have your kid learn, you know? So I think starting with that, Marcus, is just start with the fundamentals, right? And here's the other thing. Don't compare your kid to anybody else. Right, right. You know what I mean? Don't don't mm-hmm. say, I want him to be like Marcus Liberty's kid. No, you don't. Just right. have your kid develop and see what happens, right? Don't start comparing him to other kids, right? Let them develop at their own pace. Because right, you might just end up with a late bloomer. Let me ask you something, though, Kenny. Yep. You was a killer. Who you, who you, who you steal your game from? Whose stuff oh, was you stealing, dog? Jeez. Um, I love Kevin Johnson, KJ from Phoenix, because he was a little smaller, dunking on people. <laughs> I, I wore number 11 because of Isaiah Thomas. And you all know number 11 in Chicago is sacred. Like, you you can't know wear number 11 and be, and be a bad basketball player. That's wow. like, that's sacrilegious, right? You can't, you can't do that. Tim Hardaway. Uh, I saw Randy Brown. I love Randy Brown's game. Any guard from Chicago down white side, um, Maurice Cheeks. Oh my God, dude. Like all these guys. Um, Tracy was guy, number 11 too. Yeah. There was a, there was a guy, um, Alonzo Verge, one of the, one of the guards. I was like, man, I, you know, and it wasn't like I wanted to be, you ever see somebody and be like, man, I got to get better. Like that was like my <laughs> freshman year. Like I was like, yeah, I mean, so it was so many, so many Chicago guards. Um, Kenny Patterson, oh my God, oh, yeah, bro. yeah. He, Rod Strickland, because he played yeah. ball. So many guards that I just take pieces of and try to, you know, incorporate incorporate that into my game. But then, you know, I think where my dog came from is my uncle was like, yeah, "Can you, you, you can play." Let's go to the city. <laughs> right. Let's go to the city. Let's go to the city. And he would literally drop me off and be like, I'll be back. Wow. I was like, hey, where are you going? He's like, I'll be back at four, you know? And that's where I got, because it wasn't about basketball. It was about my heart and about right. my head, right? And, the bur- and I'm not saying, the, the, the difference is, is that you got to earn it in the city. And I'm not saying you don't have to earn it. Like the course that I played at in LaGrange, you had to earn it. But the city was different, right? Because, first of all, nobody knew who I was, right? right. And then, you know, I said LaGrange, oh, this suburban, that, you know, it is. <laughs> I, had to, I had to go through that process of proving, right? You know, uh-huh. somebody come and give me that elbow and I fall down. Well, now what you're going to do? Are you going to get up? Are you going, you know what I mean? So I think that's why I developed that dog because, you know, and, and being a smaller guard, you can't be small and soft. <laughs> you just, it just doesn't <laughs> work. It, don't, it doesn't work. So, you know, but but again, Liv and Rob, back in the day, you could do that, right? Mm-hmm. You could, he could drop me off at a park on the west side or the south side mm-hmm. and come back because that whatever was going on outside the court, the court was sacred, man. Mm-hmm. The court was like a sanctuary, right? All anything in the court was just basketball, right? So right. he would tell me, stay on the court, don't go nowhere else, right? I don't know if that exists anymore. You know what I mean? I don't know that you could do that anymore without, you know, something happening, right? I mean, 
it, it's, it's a tough, it's, you know, we'll talk yeah. about that too. But yeah, I think yeah. that's where I got it from, man. It's, it, yeah. it's, it's coming to the city and, 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 and getting knocked down and getting up and getting my shot blocked and, you know, and, and building that mental toughness. Cause I mean, that's, you know, and as y'all know, there's plenty of players in the city that never made it to the league mm-hmm. that had league talent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Thanks. 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 yeah, I, I agree with you and Bob, man, about that toughness you need in, in Chicago. Everywhere I go, they always say that, man. It's tough people. It's tough players come out of Chicago. And I think a lot of that is because of the streets, you know, playing on the streets, playing street ball in different areas. But I always said this when I was – and I was thinking like this when I was little, when I was, you know, maybe 13, 14 years old, that when I started playing in the suburbs, I was like, man, they so fundamentally sound. They moving the ball and they doing this. And we – we got the toughness, but we don't want to chase the ball around. They moving the ball. I'm getting tired. You know, so story. I'm, if we can mix the two, you know, that's what I was thinking back then. I was like, mix the two. Chicago, we don't have the toughness in the city, but then they come out in the suburbs and learn the fundamentals. Yeah. My thing right. was not teaching it in the city. It was just hard to find in the city, you know, so – Whatever area you was in, that's what area you was gonna play it. So whether it was an old guy who was drinking a forty ounce and hooping, you know, you learning from him. But yeah. I always mm-hmm. said that, Kenny. I always said the suburb in the suburbs, in the suburban, you're gonna learn the fundamentals. You're gonna get taught the game, just like that's your high school right. coach told you. You're gonna do it my way, <laughs> or you're not gonna play. All right. You, know, you you are you are so on point with that. Like you know, I was I had, I I was always fundamentally sound. Right. And that's what I was taught. But then coming to the city, because I was already fundamentally sound, I learned how to speed my game up. Right. I mm-hmm. learned because I already had a base of fundamentals. I learned that, you know, the game was a lot quicker in the city. Right. You got you got people jumping over the rim. You got mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You have the quickness and then, OK, well, are you used to somebody picking you up full court without turning your back? Right. So just little things like that. I just learned how to be an attacker when I went to the city instead of somebody who was just being fundamentally sound. I learned how to attack. And I think right. that's it, it goes back to being fundamentally sound and then learning how to attack mm-hmm. as opposed to learning how to attack but not being fundamentally sound, right? Because then you look sloppy, right? Turn yeah. ball over and shot doesn't look good. So you're you're really on point with that, Lib. Yeah. And then back to what you were saying earlier about, uh, I'm just going to say the training, like people who's training our kids, you know, they skip, they skip that fun, the, the fundamentals. They go right. right to the fancy, you know, the dribbling and, and all this stuff. And the kids are, are, are appealed to that. They love it. They like it. So they like it. I want to learn how to do that. But yeah, you can't even dribble with your left hand. Exactly right. right. But you can't dribble with your left hand. You're going to skip this to go to that. Right. And I think that's what's happening a lot. That's what's running away our older coaches. You know, your, your Roy Williams and uh, and those those elite coaches, Mike Krzyzewski, they don't want to yeah. deal with it no more. You they know, don't want to. Yeah. They it's don't. Some the kids game. don't. Because what's happened is AAU is taking away practice time. Right, AAU is games, 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 games. Right, right, right. You're it's taking so these kids are not used to practicing, right? They don't want to practice what they want to do, put on a uniform and play in the game. But what you don't realize is practice is what's getting you prepared for the game, right? Mm -hmm. That's why you you, you hone your skill set is in practice, and you're right. Like, you know, imagine going to a practice lib and you got kids going 50 percent, you know, they're they're, they're not. Mm You know, you, they got the we got the two balls and we're doing the drills and doing that. These kids don't want to do that now, right? Because they they didn't grow up that way. You know what they grew up doing as third grader, shooting three pointers, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, right to that three point line and throwing it up. And you, and y'all can both tell me if you watch just watch the NBA, the number of people I see with terrible form is just ridiculous. I've never mm-hmm. seen so many younger kids come in that can't shoot the ball and don't know how to shoot the ball. Right. It's just, you know, but again, I'm not going to say that our way is the best way, right? Things have evolved. 
But the game is always the same. You have right. to start with the fundamentals, right? There's different ways of approaching it. You know, I, I see, you know, people dribbling and throwing tennis balls up and all that. And, I, you know, I, I, you know, I guess that helps with, you know, hand-eye coordination. But these people ask me, Ken, where you get your handles from? I had a ball on my hand 24-7. Right. I used That's to what you got to do. You got to sleep with it, Ken. I the ball to school with my right. And yeah. then I'm just rolling through people and, try, you know, uh, that's how I learned how to dribble. Yeah, yeah. Right? My basketball was sit on the desk with me or under. And then <laughs> when I'm walking, I'm I'm with the ball. So that's how I learned how to dribble. Right. You know, even if, even if I wasn't on the court, Liv, let's say you're with your guys, you know, and a bunch of girls come, I'm going behind my back talking to them. They're like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, All right, man, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's you sitting in the ch- you you want to do sitting in the chair put it up under your leg like this? Absolutely right, <laughs> absolutely right, Rob. Ball in my hand twenty four seven. You can ask any of my friends. If you saw Kenny, you saw two things. You saw a basketball, or I was on the court. That's wow. it. Wow. You know, to the point where everybody was like, "What's wrong with him, man?" You know, Ken ain't going nowhere. Yet. But it's basketball first for him, and everything else is a distant second. Even the girl, wow. even some of the girls that like me was like, he's weird. Like, yeah, oh, that's cool. I mean, you know, you want to play one on one? Right. <laughs> that was my game, Rob, is I'm going to try to get the girl to play one on one, right? The problem is I'm going too hard. So, you know, she didn't fail because I didn't cross her over, right? <laughs> no, you didn't. You didn't cross those girls over like that. Didn't you? <laughs> Hey, Kenny, real quick, Liv, I was just want to say when you were talking about the suburbs in the city, man, and I had the same conversation with my sons. In mm-hmm. the suburbs, it's, it is passive. And it's mm-hmm. almost like in the suburbs, because we live in the suburbs, and I raise my sons out here. They got to get hit in the mouth first before they bring it. Right. Whereas in the city, they hitting you in the mouth to make yeah. you bring it. Well, and that's the difference in the suburbs, man. Absolutely. And that's why my uncle took me to the city, right? Because it was more of you know, it was the mental part and the heart part that he was, and, he, and you know, I did it at a, a younger age, right? Where, you know, they don't care if you can play or not, they're going to still test your heart, right? Like, my uncle would say two things. He would say, and this, and then uh, him and another guy would say, um, Kenny, I could take somebody, some, if somebody with heart and if somebody with hunger, right? He was like, you're going to develop your heart first. But somebody hungry will take it. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh, you know what I mean? So he's like, you need to be hungry. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Because you can have heart, but somebody who's hungry will take your heart. So that's why it's like, let's go to the city. And then I was riding my bike to the city. You know, um, me and my cousin Sean Pearson, we ride straight up Ogden Avenue, stop at all the parks. And then, you know, after a while, they got to know us. You know, we go to Maywood, to 10th Park, 10th Park in Maywood. And, you know, we go to Argo and play with Ray and them. So, again, it was the atmosphere that made me, right? Mm-hmm. It was a safe atmosphere. It was the love for the game. And people like yourselves who was dropping knowledge, you know, to me on and off the court, right? So I took everybody's knowledge into, into consideration. So I'm listening to Lib, who I know is a great player, but I'm also listening to the guy that might have not made it, might have mm-hmm. made some mistakes throughout his life, and nobody listened to him, right? Because now he's not, he don't have any credibility. I listen to that mm-hmm. person too. Because I don't, he's telling me the mistakes he's made, so I don't make them. So yeah. I weigh uh, everybody's knowledge, not just the people that make it. Yeah. Yeah. And and Bobby, and Bobby was one of those fancy guards too, man. And he, he talked, <laughs> I could tell. He talked, he talks about, you know, too on our show that, you know, how Bob Hambrick over at Simeon was more fundamental, you know, Absolutely. About teaching about doing it his way. And he wanted to do it his way, you know, and 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 and, and sometimes you might have to swallow that pill, you know. You have to, man. You make that decision, Bob, to go there. You know. I hey look, if I if I could do it all over again, I'd do it differently, Liv. I no, so do so it. so here's the thing with that. Now you can teach because you went through it. You can mm-hmm. say it didn't work. Maybe I, I could have changed. But now you can tell your son. You could tell anybody watching it. This is the way you have to do it. Right. So it's right. not necessarily your experience is not necessarily going to be 
helping you at the at the moment. But if you can pass on that knowledge, I think that's even more important, right? I mean, right. what are you doing now, bro? Like y'all, I mean, it's a show, but you help people, right? Yeah. That's why we're here. You know, I and, and to add to that and, and what Liv was saying also, I didn't play not one, I played one game of high school ball. And then when even when I went to college, I made a team, but I didn't play at all. But both of my sons, I got two sons playing in college. They all played high school there. So it's like, okay, well, they got you it. I didn't do it. So it's all good, though. But you won. I, I tell them the stories all the time because I hated coaches because coaches, they were too strict. And I was fancy. So yeah. I didn't like practice. And then I hated referees because they were slowing the game down. So <laughs> right. I like the streets. <laughs> yeah. but listen to what you just said, bro. You said that you had two kids – in college. I got two in college right now and one at the prep school. So I got four kids in college, three kids in college all together. But yeah. See, so it trickled down to them. They got it. Yeah, now I mean that's the stories that we need to hear, right? That you took your experience, all of it, and look what you've done, man. And and you're you're a father. Like, come on, oh, man. Yeah. Like, don't I don't want you, and I know you're not, but I don't want you to de diminish that. Like that's that that's awesome. Oh, that's my greatest achievement, man. I'm a six-time champion yeah. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Liv, you got that? Oh, I got I six you, rings. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations I'm, on that. I'm a six-time champ like uh, like uh, Mike, but with yeah. kids. Right. But, exactly. Yeah, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, man, our, our kids are our greatest blessing. And, uh, and I know, you know, we don't talk about religion a lot on here, but I do know that. Uh, God didn't allow a lot of that stuff to happen, so I could be here to be a father for the for the kids. Because I no tell mistakes. them, you know, I've told them before, if I didn't went pro, uh, I had that opportunity, none of y'all would have been here. Exactly. You know? right. And Lib said to me all the time, dude, if I didn't went here, we wouldn't be doing this show. So, you know, all these things happen for a reason. Like if Lib no would have went anywhere else for, for college, let's just say, he wouldn't have been here right now. So, exactly. None of us would be. So Right. One of the things I'll leave you with is just always believe you're exactly where you're supposed to be. That's right. Right. Just believe if you believe that, then from there you can go anywhere. Right. You know, we all go. We get to that point where we wish we were here and we wish we we're there. I wish I I wish I would have went to the NBA. I went to I went to Europe for 13 years in eight different countries, came oh. back, came back a man. So you see what I'm saying? Like, Ooh. just believe where you're supposed to be right in this moment. Like, be in the moment. Don't mm -hmm. ever be in the past. Don't ever be too much in the future. Just be at the moment, and then you can go anywhere you want. That's real. Um, you heard it on All Ball Chicago with UIC <laughs> retired Hall of Famer Kenny. <laughs> yes, that was beautiful, my brother, man. I appreciate it. You want to, Bob? Any shout shout outs you need to give, man? Before we uh, let me go to the let me go to the telestrator right quick. I know Sean yeah, Pryor man. said something. He said God, a straight killer, K Dub, one of my favorites. That's and my guy. Somebody, I, they, some of the, some of our uh, people on our timeline, they have to click screen yard to let them get their name, so we don't even see the name. But it says Kenny Kenny Claude. <laughs> who who uh, called you that, Kenny? Oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Um, this uh well you got of course you had uh Dwight Rogers, he say what's up, Brian Williams, he say what's up. <laughs> uh they showing love, uh Kevin Haywood. Uh some of these uh, a pack Yosemite. I can't pronounce that name. Yeah, yeah. I can probably a lot of my Lagrange guys, you know. I think you know th that's the other thing I'll leave you with this too, guys, is that like I never I never got to the point where I tried to big time anybody. Like if, that's, I always, that's if I always knew you, I'm always know you, right? I never, if, if, if I talk to you in eighth grade, I'm going to talk to you when I'm in college, right? And I think, you know, Lib, so that's one of the things I got from you, right? Where when we came up for the autograph, you wasn't like I'm the number one player in the nation. You was like, mm -hmm. I'm Marcus Liberty. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man like you. So I felt like, you know, and that comes a lot from my family as well. Like, you know, you know, humble yourself, right? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. At the only the only thing I'm better at you is in basketball. Don't mean we get a better person. So that you know right. what I mean. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. That's real, Kenny, man. You yeah. are the realist, brother. You say yeah. you help kids, you help players get in school. So yeah, so I had a company called Hoops Elite. Um, it was more on a basketball training um standpoint, but you know, from there I went to you know 
when you get to college, what are you going to do? Right. So mm-hmm. I would have to sit down with the kids and say, hey, what do you like to do outside of, you know, outside of basketball? Like I, my thing is always have a plan. Right. You should be mm-hmm. thinking. I tell everybody you should be thinking five years in advance from right now. Right. Um, right. So you can have a plan and I tell them to write it down. Right. So like for me, I have a, I have a whiteboard. I know exactly what I'm doing for the rest of this for the rest of today. I know exactly what I'm doing tomorrow. I put the times down. So every day I have, you know, I have a set of goals to take care of. And at the end of the week, I'll go back and say, well, Kenny, you didn't do this. That's the first thing on my list for the next week. So as far as working with kids, I mean, I think I want, I always wanted them to, to graduate. Right. Um, and, and here's the thing is basketball or college is not for everyone. And I don't want, parents or kids thinking that if their kids don't go to college that they won't be successful right. education doesn't doesn't just mean college right there's right. trade schools there's there's media there's so many things that you can get into because what's happened in the narrative now is you, you know your kids are going to college and if they don't get a scholarship they're coming out 22 years old with a hundred thousand dollars in debt and no job right mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. You can go to trade schools. You can go to media schools. They're so, but you just have to have a plan, right? You and and live, and live to that plan, right? Don't get too mm-hmm. much derailed on what you want to do. You know, I mean, look look at you know. I used to look at, I used to look at my basketball in the morning and look at it at night. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I go to sleep because that's what I wanted to do, right? So I think, mm-hmm. you know, um, just helping kids kind of realize, you know that they can be whatever they want, man, that, 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 that truly you can be, but there's a process to get there. Right. Because mm-hmm. if you just sit there and dream about what you want, you'll be dreaming your entire life. <laughs> you right. gotta, have, you gotta match that dream with action. Right. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that action has to get you toward that dream. Right. There's going to be down ups and downs, but that's just part of your life. So that's what I try to, uh, you know, to um, instill in these kids and, you know, kind of like with your kids, Rob, that's my biggest achievement. It, it's not that it's, it's, it's none of this. It's, it's, it's nothing about Kenny. If I can say that I've helped anybody become better, then that's mm-hmm. all we're here for. That's all we're here for. That's what we're here for on this earth. Yeah. We're just a vessel, man, to help people. And I, I tell people that all the time, you can't take nothing with you. Nope. Bro. All you will have is the memories of people, who, the way that they remembered you. That's, that's it. it. That's it. That's it. That's the most important that's so, I mean, that, that's the key. But see, that's that's maturity. That's a lifetime of going through things, right? We wasn't talking about this at 13 years old, right? No. The world, you know what I mean? So, but then also, I think accepting people, right? You guys have all type of people on here through your experiences, through your losses, through your gains, through your ups and your downs. You've acquired that knowledge, and then you are passing that knowledge on. But you're humble. So that's mm-hmm. that's the key. Once you get to a point that you're not humble, you might as well go ahead and die because you're do, you've done you've done learning, right? Because mm-hmm. you're not doing a service to anybody besides yourself, and we're not right. here for ourselves. We're here for everybody else. Right, right. Yeah? No, that's dope. Bob, do you know anything about this that I just put up there? I've seen that yeah, uh, floating this. around. Yeah, you seen that too, Kenny? Have yeah, you I can seen see that? it. Yeah, APAC. Yo. Yeah. The Chicago Public League Basketball History of Excellence Reunion. Uh, somebody else sent me something to that nature. Uh, my guy Lester, he graduated from uh, Corliss. And he okay. was telling me about that. He had all those guys' names on there. That's going to be there. So. We might. Car- I think Carvel. You got Carvel's number still, right? Bailey. Bailey. Yeah, Bob. Yeah, yeah. You might need to call. Uh, he just chimed Car- in, too. Carvel Car- knows. Knows about everything that's going on in the city, so he would know right. something about this. So yeah, that's uh, yeah, he's watching right now. Yeah, cool. So that's, yeah, uh, no, I think, um, man, thank y'all for having me on for sure, man. Just man, you got to come back, man, because you just dropped anytime. some jewels, bro. In- anytime, man. The I gods, love the man. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've right. seen the, the, the people that you guys have on here, and the reason I like the platform is because. It's not just about basketball, you know. Someone told me this a long time ago. He said, you can learn anything about anyone the way they play basketball. 
He's like, mm. if you want if you want to learn something about somebody, watch them play this game. Wow. And I was like, I never knew what that meant until I started paying attention, right? Till I started paying attention to how, how Marcus Liberty played, right? At the end of the game, Marcus Liberty had a triple double, <laughs> right? Marcus Liberty was never in a rush. Marcus Liberty never got too emotional. Marcus Liberty was always, we call him big smooth. That's right. how Marcus Liberty is. You can learn everything about somebody by the way they play this game. Wow. wow. Okay, the That's guy said his name is Bernie Johnson. Bernie, Bernie Johnson, Johnson is doing this. Okay. 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 Uh, you can to Ernie Johnson? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Go on and throw your house music. I heard, you hear, I heard that house music coming on. Uh, you know, we're Chicago heads, so, you know. You, you, <laughs> We, we house music. Uh, hey, we here when we had Farley on here, boy. We got hype though, right there. Oh, yeah, Farley on. I didn't know yeah, that. We had Farley, man. We had to. It was last year. It was last What's year, up? but. Oh, What's wait, up? wait. Carvel's got a question. He said, I asked K Dub, how many shots did he look to make daily? It'll blow your oh, mind. Oh, great question, Carvel. And I know, I know Carvel. So I, I would make 500 shots a day, not shoot. Make. make right i would make and and what i tried to do is not make it stationary right where i'm just sitting in one spot i think a lot of kids make that mistake because marcus Liberty, how many times are you going to do that in the game where you're going to be able to sit stationary and just shoot for me it was everything was kind of off the dribble right so right. make 500 shots a game and then the other thing i would do the one thing i did in college was i call it i call it one percent better Right. So 1% better every day. So let's say I started off April 1st making 200 shots. The next day, 1% of 200 is two. So right. every day I'm making. So at the end of the summer, instead of making 200 shots, now I'm up to four or 500 shots. Right. So mm. every day I'm getting better. Right. So, yeah, no, I think when you practice, you practice to make the shots, right? Not, you know, somebody be like, hey, I shot a thousand shots today. Well, how many did you make? Right? right so, right. you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you're shooting to make the shots, right? And then from there, I went to what I call precision shooting. So, what I mean by that is no rim. If it ain't going, if that net ain't up at the end, it doesn't count. Now, sometimes I was there for an hour. It was times I was there for seven hours. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, but right. I was able to like concentrate and that's my precision shooting, right? All my free throws, no rim, right? Hit the rim, it doesn't count. So just little oh. things that I would do to my do for myself to make sure that my game was tight, right? Yes. Wow. Yeah. People don't know what goes behind the mind of a mad scientist. <laughs> well, no, they, they just see they just see the product, you know, the finished product. They see mm -hmm. Kenny out on the court doing his thing, but they don't know unless yeah. you're in a circle of how many hours he put on the on the court, how many shots, like he just said, he had to make, you know, yeah. how he he wrote it down and, and made sure he did the percentages of how how I'm, how many I made this at this angle, how many I made at that. So yeah. it's a lot of things like. When I when I talk to kids about Steph Curry, everybody wants to shoot threes because they see Steph Curry, but they don't know the work that Steph work. Curry put in to do that. He started in close and worked his way out. These kids exactly. start their way out and stay out. Right. Right. Know? And they don't, exactly. they don't get right. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly right, Lib. I mean, you know, uh, you, you see, see all this. See how we said we were about to go? And then we just start yeah. talking again, talking. Yeah. Talking. We don't have nobody in our ear talking about, all right, take, it's time to stop. You know, we keep going all day, man. We keep going all day. Bro. Yeah, so man. They turned it to two-hour joints. I have to go live, still be all. But like, yeah, man. I mean, that's, that's the love of the game, right? When you yeah. can, you know, because – when you can bounce ideas off of each other, you know, there's things that live and even Bob, you said that, you know, I'm thinking about and there's things that people are listening that we said. So maybe somebody can say, oh, well, instead of making or instead of shooting 250 shots, let me make 100 precision shots. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, because then you're not worried about time. Right. You're worried about the product, the finished product. Like I said, there's times it took me an hour. There's times it took me six hours. Right. But mm -hmm. I, I finished it. Right. And the result was the games were easy, right? So, right. Yeah. right. 
Well, I, I want to add this real quick before you go, man. Uh, yep. Being a being a guard myself, I would honestly have to say that the toughest players that I ever played against, period, period, mm -hmm. at the guard spot was right here in Chicago. Absolutely. I never never ran into anybody that was as tough as anybody that I met in Chicago. Because if they can't win, they're gonna ready, be ready to fight. So okay. you got to you got to make up your decisions. Which one you want to do? You gonna fight? You gonna win? Which one you gonna do? So yeah. That, Basketball has always been a rest haven for all of us here in Chicago, man. Yeah. Right. That's why the that's why the program was such a a big thing. At least when I was in college, to go because you're gonna see Tim Hardaway there. You know, you're gonna mm -hmm. see. You know, you're gonna see uh, Don White, Alibaba, and all them boys. You're gonna see all of them there, right? You're gonna see so many guards. Like it was no it was no cakewalk. Over at the IIT, I don't care what day you went over there, like you had to come with it. And mm. then you got my guy in the gym, like you gonna get embarrassed. Yeah, that's you know that's my uncle, man. That's my <laughs> man. Yeah, man, yeah, I man. love that guy. I love yeah. him, man. We and, and you know, remember IIT? So it was over on I think it was IIT in the summer. Mm -hmm. It was 104, 104 degrees in there, man. You come, yeah. it's what? Oh my god. <laughs> So that's what I that's what I loved about that, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, man. It, it's uh, I know we do got to go, but um, yeah, we more like a TV show. You know, it's not like a podcast. We more like a TV show, man. You watch it for <laughs> oh, hours. It's, and it's real, we live. We it's didn't real. put no commercial breaks in. Or anything oh. like that, you know, but, but I think we do we do brighten up people's days. You know, lunch break. You know, that's why we try to come on at lunchtime. So, so most of our listeners are probably going back to work now. But yeah, no, it's perfect timing. I got to yeah, get back. Man, and, and Kenny, I just really want to say this, man. That one, one, I am happy, you know, to have you on the show, but also, man. You are a good dude. You know, you, you, you are a, a great person to be great around. Guy. And I and I know you've been doing UIC basketball games on the radio and dropping knowledge to, to all the listeners, all the UIC alums and, and people who want to see or hear about UIC. And I think UIC is on to something, man. I think they're they're, they're going to get back on, on top yep. and get back to the tournament again, man, because uh, – we we want all of our Chicago team. We want all of our Illinois teams to to be successful, man. And I think uh, UIC is one of those teams that's on the up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm, that's why I'm repping my school. Um, Jonathan Hood, who has a a, a, um, a TV uh, or I'm sorry, a radio show, ESPN 1000 in the mornings. Then he has um, an NBA podcast called Under the Hood. We are in the works of doing all the UIC games this year. Just kind of trying to figure out with COVID. Like when we travel the teams with the team, you know, are we, you know, are we going to be stuck in a hotel? Just so much stuff going on with right. kind of COVID things and, you know, going state to state, you know, things like that. But, um, you know, that's in the works. We, we did it previously in the last couple of years. We didn't, but it, it's definitely back into the, in the works. We'd be on ESPN 1000 and ESPN three. So just, you know, trying to, uh, get all that together. But yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I believe this school, right. Um, School took a chance on me, and you know I, I think it turned out well. But you know, mainly it's kind of what you said, Lib. It's a Chicago school. I want to see all the schools. Mm -hmm. You know, I, if, if every single school in the Chicago land area makes a tournament, I think it's just great for the city because then it attracts the kids to stay here. That, that's what mm -hmm. I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh. man, that's awesome, man. So. uh Anything else you want to add, Kenny, before you go, man? No, man. You know, just both of y'all are, are, are great people, man. Just kind of learning them. Lib, obviously, we, we got a relationship. But then, Bob, learning about you, man, and learning about your kids. Every All blessings to your kids, man. You got Thank you, man. Knowledge. I mean, like, bro, like, I think that's just something that is it, just taken for granted. Like, we always hearing these stories, especially within the African, African American community, that we need better fathers. Well, we got we got two right here, bro. Like that 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 needs to that 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 needs to be heard. It needs to be talked about, right? I think right. that 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 the, the, that's a true hero, right? Not me having my jersey up in the uh, Raptors. True hero is the legacy you're passing on to your kids, and both of you two are doing a great job. So, I mean, I, that's what I love about it. And you know, if, I'm always here. You know what I mean? I'm always listening to the show. But yeah. And if I can help out with any anything, you Bob, you call me, say, Ken, I need you to come here. Lib, you already know I'm there. 
So yeah. Yep, we'll get you back on because we want to start talking about college basketball. So that'll be a good one to have mm-hmm. you back on when we start talking about college basketball. Cool. I'll be, you know me, I'll be there. I'll be here. Yep. All right, my man. Appreciate right, you, bro. Kenny yeah. Williams in yeah. the building. Boy, God, baby. Nice <laughs> to meet you, boy. Okay. Thank you much, man. Appreciate everything. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing about them Chicago guards, boy. <laughs> Every Chicago guard got that crossover, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We love to pat that rock, boy. You talking about pat the rock? Well, come on, man. man it's windy. You know, it was cold. We had to pat the rock. But you know what, though? A lot of us got that pat the rock from Isaiah Thomas. You know, watch me. I, got, I absolutely got it from Isaiah That's Thomas. That's what I'm and, talking and about. And Clyde Bradshaw at DePaul. Nah, man, I, I saw both of to- them. Isaiah used to pat that rock, man, out between his legs, especially between the legs. <laughs> yeah. And then he'd go to the other back. leg and do the same thing. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, on. man. It was nasty, man. He man, did open the eyes for generations, man. Isaiah would have to be our official point guard. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. But I with agree. the handles, like Mo Cheeks and them didn't do all of that. No, no. But Mo Cheeks got it done. He definitely got it Lib, done. Um, that was a good show, man. Who else we got this week, big baby? Oh man, we got the, the 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 legend coming in uh from the NBA who does a lot of the NBA game, Mr. David Aldrich that will be joining us Friday. David Aldrich, man. Friday, and then, man. And and went now. into the Pandora's box and, and pulled a hat trick out there. Yeah, so first make Kenny sure Williams you, and now David Aldrich. So make sure you tune in to that one Friday. Uh same time, 12 o'clock, you know, uh, David Aldrich will be joining us. We'll talk a little NBA. We'll talk about what he's going on, got going on in, in the D.C. area. And it's going to be a great show. It's going to be a great show. So if you have any questions, make sure you, when I put the post up, make sure you put it down below so we can make sure we share, we share it with him. Uh, this is definitely going to be a, da- a dapper dandy. Man, no doubt, Kenny. Absolutely. We appreciate you, man. Kenny chiming in. And, um, and Kenny's just a great dude, man. And and to see Good someone, dude, man. But to see someone his size, man. Like I look at Muggsy Bogues, I look at Kenny Williams, I look at Reginald King, who played at King High School. I look at Ramil Shorter. Those guys, when they were playing basketball, they played bigger than what their size were. Mm-hmm. You know, and they didn't let that get in the way. You notice, you heard what he said. He's like, man, I didn't even pay attention to that. I'm like, right, right. He's six eight, he's six eight. <laughs> Because when we was growing up, size really didn't matter. No. If you could play. No. If you could no. play, they never, didn't. Nowadays, it's the emphasis. Oh, how tall is he? I never even, when I was six, seven, in high school, six, seven, six, eight, I never looked at my height as different. I'm like, man, I'm a guard. You know, I play like a guard. So I'm not <laughs> thinking of myself as a big dude. You know, right. I'm you, looking at if you like, want to pass the way at that dribble, right? You're like, I ain't no big. No, like LJ no, talking no. about, he wanted you to come down in the paint. No, nah, dog, come on out here. Yeah, so uh, if you want some of this, come on up the room. Like you talking <laughs> about, I want some of you in the post. I mean, it, it, it's a two way street, blood, you know. <laughs> I, but I will come down there and throw your shit in the pocket. I will, I will, I will throw a finger go, roll over you and I will bang you. I will bang you. you know, yes, but no, I mean, I'm from Chicago, man. I don't know what he was talking about. I don't either, man. And, and, and we don't just throw Chicago around like like we feel like our city is better. But this city is cold. It's gangsterish. It, it's tough, man. This is a tough city to survive in. And if you can survive here, you can survive anywhere, brother. Yeah. Yeah, you. It, it's definitely different. It de- it's definitely a different type of – you You have to live here to understand really about Chicago from the food to – to the neighborhoods, our know, food, to your boy. color of your hat, you got to make you know all that stuff. You got to know the codes. Yeah. You know you can't just yeah. come in the city and just say I'm 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 in Chicago. You know you got to well, you can't so, wear your hat to the right. Yeah, you 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 one gang. If you wear it to the left, you're another gang. You yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah. And, so, so. and now the new generation, you really got to be careful because they extra. So shout out to the young generation for the ones who doing positive things, man. We're not gonna just harp on the young people that's doing ignorant ignorant stuff there are people here that are doing big things these young people man so oh yeah shout out to them yeah oh yeah and continue to do it and continue to do it it's it's not the, the crime is not stopping the ones that really wants to help they are out there they're still in the streets helping 
you know, kids. Like my man Lefty D Boy, he's doing his thing, man. He, he got a, a place where he let the kids come and play basketball. And, he he and painted it and everything, right? Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, he he he's doing a lot of like great things. You know, you got my man Coach Pryor on the West Side. He's doing his thing. You got Miss Foster, who we had on the show. She's doing her thing. You know, we have Cavell Bailey, who's doing his thing. So we got a lot of great people doing it. You just, Kenny Williams just said he's doing things. So we got a lot of people that's yeah. out there that want to help, that wants yeah. to lend a hand to some youngsters out there, man. So another great show, man. Yeah, another great show. Man. Absolutely, man. All Ball Chicago. I'm your co-host, Robert Bobby Reed, and I got the legend, the NBA veteran, the McDonald's All-American, your host, Marcus, living in the building. What you finna be on, big fella? Man, it's house. It's house. Go have me up in this boat. You turn it out. I'm gonna go do the ET, boy. You don't remember how they used to do the ET at Mendel? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. sure. Uh, I'm too old to do the ET. I've been a blue out of uh, Achilles or something. Because <laughs> that requires jumping. <laughs> hey, there's one thing I can say about house music, man, and you dance to it. You got to be in some shape. You got to be in good shape, man, to do that. Man. Heck yeah, the whole night? Because <laughs> it don't stop. The track goes cats, for five hours. And I just seen cats there on the floor the whole time, man. Because the music be so good. They be all up into it, man. And shaking and jumping and dropping to the floor. And oh man, you got to be in yeah. shape, bro. Yeah, man. We that's one good thing, positive thing about Chicago. Even when they're doing the picnic out there every Thursday night, they do that thing out there, that house thing, man. It's you know, it's good to see people enjoying themselves in Chicago. And you, you never just never hear about the good stuff. It's 4 million people in Chicago. If 50 people get shot in the weekend, as, as much as we hate to think about it, that's not that many. You know, uh, one one is too many. But you got 4 million people cluttered into this one area. You're going to have some crime, bro. I just heard the other day, Bob, before we get out of here, I just heard on the other, the other day that the uh, uh, Obama library is, is, is just broke ground. It's in the works. Yeah. You know, and I heard yeah. he's going to have an athletic center in there as well. Yeah, I think we need to go over there and uh, all ball Chicago need to be over there with you, Barack Obama. Barack Obama. <laughs> you said Ciroc. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was best because Puff Daddy was calling them that during the election. He's like, oh. man, I'm here supporting my man, Ciroc Obama. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, that'll be dope, uh, man. And hopefully we can rechange this and do like uh, AC said, get that subculture going where we right. grabbing these younger kids and, and, and revamping them because this too will come to pass. The violence, just like crack and all that stuff came to pass when we was coming up. All of this gun stuff going to come to pass. Now, it's going to be something else. But right. We just got to wait to see what that's going to be replaced with. Right. All right, my man. You be safe, man, out there in the streets. Absolutely, bro. bro. All you right. know it. I'm in the burbs, man. I'm going to give me some tea. Peace. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank y'all for watching. Chicago. Oh.